Hello and welcome back to our tutorial series where we are making a deck building roguelike card game in Unity. So today is going to be a pretty complicated and uh, long tutorial. It's going to be the longest one we've done in a while. The reason for that is that um, I hadn't actually planned to do this for this tutorial series, but there was many requests for it and many, many questions about it. And so I feel like it would be best if I go ahead and cover it now. And uh, I think this is a good time to cover it based upon where we're at with the other elements of the game. So what we're doing today is we're actually adding a new card type. Um, and if we had actually done this at the very beginning, things would be a lot easier now. But as it is, we're actually going to have to go back and change quite a few things in order to integrate a new card type. There are many different ways to do this, but because the card type that we're going to add on, which is going to be a spell, it's going to be a spell cards. What they're going to do is they're going to add buffs and debuffs to other characters that are on the field already. Because they're going to be so different from the other cards, what we need to do is we actually need to have different classes for them. So we need to have a character's class and a spell class. Um... And so both of those will actually end up inheriting from our card class. It sounds kind of complicated when I'm talking about it that way, uh, but it'll make sense as we go, as we go through it. Um, let me go ahead and show you what we'll end up with. I definitely had to do all this before recording because it, of how involved it was going to be. So this is all going to be me redoing what I've already done. So hopefully there'll be a lot less mistakes and we'll actually be able to get through it faster and cleaner. So this is what it looks like now, after everything we, we've done, we've gone through it. So you can see we now have some spells. Now, the spells don't actually do anything right now. They're just kind of here. But we still have our characters. We put our characters out there. We can drag our spell over our character and let go, and it plays our spell card as well. So you can kind of see what we're going with here. Before we get too far into this, um, I actually have a new font that I want to use in the series. Um, so there should be a link in the description of this video. So um, it's the uh, Sackett font. I don't I hope I'm saying that right. I don't really know. So I'm going to give you a uh, hollow, regular, and a regular. Let's go and get both of those. And drag them into your fonts folder. Right click, create font asset, right click, create, and then TextMess Pro font asset. We'll do that for both of those. And then what I want to do next is actually, so since I have to change fonts pretty regularly whenever I don't like something, what I want to do is I want to set up a system to where I can change the font in one place and it reflects all across the game. So let's go ahead and go into our Options Manager script. So inside of our Options Manager, we're going to kind of build out a system that allows us to change fonts across the board without really needing to make those individual changes to fonts. So what we need to do is underneath this first one, we're going to put in a new, actually first up here, we need to add using TM Pro. And then in here, we're gonna go public list. And this is gonna be a TMP font asset font list then public we're going to set up an event static event action font updated so down below this update method 
we're gonna go public pmp font asset so that means it's gonna return a font asset we're gonna name this get fonts class and we're gonna have an input of a string class ID okay now we need to have a switch so we'll do switch class ID okay and then I'm gonna copy this over so our default font is going to be our first set first option and then below that we'll have menu text card title card body card body bold menu text bold etc so let's save this go back into our game we'll go into our uh, resources prefabs options manager and then on this font list, we're going to add five options. Okay, so this first one was menu text, just normal menu text, and we're going to do Jost regular. This next one was our card title, so we're actually going to do Sakat regular. Next one's going to be card body, so we're going to do Jost regular. Next is card body bold, so we're going to do just semi bold. And finally is menu text bold, which we'll also do just semi bold. Okay. Next, we need to have a script that um, reads these fonts. So I'm going to do create new uh, C sharp script. I'm going to name, name this one font setter. And let's go ahead and open that up and edit that. So inside of font setter, let's go ahead and delete these usings up here. And we're going to add one using PM Pro. And then at the beginning of our script, we're going to add a... Since this can only be used if it has a TMB text component on the objects, we need to add a require component type of TMP text. So when you do TMP text, it applies to both UI and non-UI TMP text assets. Then go and delete everything here. And we're going to do public string font class. So this is where we will put in our string for the class that we want, which remember is either menu text, card title, card body, card body bold, or menu text bold. Okay, next we need to do private void on enable. And what we're going to do is we're going to Subscribe to the event, which is pretty simple. All we need to do is options manager dot font updated plus equals set font. Um, did I do the event? Yet? Oh, I forgot to do the event. Sorry. Let's go back over to our options manager. Let's set up the event real quick. So we'll do public void update fonts. I'm going to do font updated dot invoke. We'll save that and we'll go back over here. So whenever font is updated, what this will do is it's going to trigger set font. We're just going to go ahead and trigger set font now, which is a method that we haven't set yet. So let's go ahead and come down here. 
next we need to unsubscribe to the event whenever this is disabled. So let's just do that real quick before we do the next method. Private void on disable. And we're going to do basically the exact same thing, but with a minus instead of a plus. Next, we'll do our uh, set font method. So first, we need to find the TMP text components. So TMP text equals text component, get component TMP text. And then if we have that text component and options manager is not null, then we can go ahead and grab that font class. So text component dot font. So we're setting the font of our text component. Gate manager dot instance dot options manager dot get font class. So that is this uh, method right here. And then font class, which is the string we're putting in there. So what this does is that we can so then go in our canvas and create UI text mesh pro. So see how it says new text right there. So I'm gonna drag this around. Let's sorry, let's uh so gonna put it at the top of the screen real quick. So it's fonts currently set to liberation sans, but if I go in here, go add component, font setter. And we don't need this open, let me just minimize that. And then if I set this in as menu text, right, that's one of our Yeah, menu text is our first font. And hit play. And see it changed the font. Now it's just regular. And go in here and change this to card title and see it updated it to the other text font so we want to include this on every single text option that we use and make sure that we have a class for it and then as we go along we'll probably expand and add more classes in this switch but for now this just this will carry on this will cover just about everything that we need it to for now and go back and add stuff as we need it. Now that we've done that, let's move on to adding our spell cards. Sorry, one last thing to do before we move on. Go into your scenes folder. Let's rename this scene. We're gonna rename it combat scene. I'm going to create a new scene or name this one test scene or sorry I put text but I mean test we'll just test everything out in here that we'll be doing so let's go ahead and quickly add a um, event system and then let's throw in our prefabs so our game manager prefab. Oh, we forgot to go into our deck manager here. What's going on here? Oh, no, that's fine. Our game manager prefab, let's drag that into there. And then we also need to drag in our canvas. Um, but then we can disable a bunch of stuff because we don't really need it. Uh, we don't need our counter or a draw pile um, or a draw card button and instead of our game manager we don't need our deck manager 
because we're just, you know, this is just to test our cards out. Now that we've done all that, let's go ahead and move into our scripts folder. And we're going to make a new script. We're going to name this character. Open up that script. And before we do anything else, we need to start talking about inheritance. Inheritance is where a script can inherit the methods of another script. Let's go back and open up our card script. So inside of our card script, we have all these enumerators and these variables. And we go back over to our character script and none of that is here. And see that right now, this script is inheriting from mono behavior. Mono behavior is a base class in Unity that provides a lot of useful um, default methods, like for instance, the start method comes from mono behavior. So does update, you know? And uh, so does, you know, things like on enable and, you know, on disable. You know, things like that. Those are inherited from mono behavior. And so having mono behavior inheritance is good because it allows us to have those default methods available for us to use pretty often. However, for what we want to do next, so we want to have two types of cards. They're both going to be cards, but they're going to be two types of cards. That provides an opportunity for us to go into our card script, remove everything that doesn't apply to all the cards, and then separate those out into different classes. Like, for instance, we're going to have a character class. We're also going to have a spell class. So first things first, what we need to do is we need to go and set up this character class. Let's go into our card and decide, or go through all these things and say, okay, this is all cards. This is only for characters. So there's actually only four variables in here that we need for all cards. So we need our card name, our card type. We need our sprite. So let's select that and we're going to drag it up here. And we also need a description, which you don't have yet. So we can just go ahead and add that in here. All the rest of this is only used by the character class. We are going to have individual types of cards. We no longer need this up here. So let's go ahead and cut that. We can go over to our character. And let's go ahead and paste that into here. Instead of new card, we're going to do new character card. And it's going to be card slash character in the menu. And let's go ahead and remove this mono behavior and set this to card. One other thing is that since this is um, part of our namespace, you can see we put our namespace at the beginning of this. We need to go in here. We need changes to using Cinemus Productions. And that will make this pull in the card class from our namespace. So we can delete all this here. Let's go back into here. And before we copy everything over, I realize that our card type and our damage types are exactly the same. So instead of having two enumerators of the exact same information, we can just change this to element Type. Then we're going to copy this into this list right here and this list right here. 
because they're both pulling from the exact same, you know, type of things. So we don't need to have multiple lists. Now that we have all that, we can go ahead and cut this and go back over to our character script and we can paste it into here. Go ahead and format the document so it arranges everything correctly. Um, and we don't need this systems collections. And we can save this. We can save this. So now, inside of our card script, we only have the variables that apply to all cards. And inside of our character class, we have the variables that apply just to characters. Go ahead and save this. And we'll go back to our game. And we're going to get error messages. Because we have a lot of things referencing things inside of our card class that are no longer there. Before we fix that stuff though, let's go ahead and make our spell card. So we're going to, our spell script. We're going to right click C sharp script, spell. Let's open this up. And we can go ahead and add in using your personal namespace. We're going to change this to a to inheriting from card. We'll delete everything that's in here. Let's go over to our character script. We're going to copy this at the beginning of our... card script. We'll change this to new spell card do card spell for the menu. Okay, now we need to get some new um, enumerators set up in our card script. Let's go back over here and we're going to set up uh, a few more enumerators inside of here. So the first one is going to be the spell type, if it's going to be a buff or debuff. So that's pretty simple. And next it's going to be your attribute target. So this is going to tell us which target or which attribute we are going to be buffing or debuffing. You won't really see the full power of this coming to play in this episode. Um, but you'll see it come into play in the next episode where we actually set up everything to uh, be able to use these attributes and first actually be able to play the spell cards. Today we're just setting them up so they can be displayed visually and show up in of our hand. So back inside of our spell script we're just going to have three basic variables. Public spell type, spell type. Public attribute target list, attribute target. Public integer list, attribute change amount. So now that we've done all that, we can actually make cards that are both characters and spells. But it actually won't let us do that right now because we're getting error messages. Um... Which is fair, because our display and our card movement scripts don't take into account the changes that we've made to our card class and our character and spell subclasses. So we need to adjust those first, so let's go ahead and jump into our card display script first. So inside of our card display, we are going to have a lot of variables. So I want to separate them uh, into different sections based upon if they apply to all cards or just character cards. So this first one's going to be all card elements. And then down here, we're going to do character card elements. And below that, we'll do spell 
card elements. Okay, so the card good is for all cards. Card image is for all cards. Um, name text is for all cards. Health text is going to be card elements. Damage text is also card elements. And then damage image is also going to be card elements. Okay. And then type images is going to be all. Display image is also all. Um, and then let's go ahead and delete these unneeded spaces. Okay. And then we need to add a few things into here. So we're going to set up a game object for both the character and card elements that are actually going to be apparent to have all those elements underneath them. So we can disable that one element and disable everything underneath it automatically. So we can have an easy way to kind of swap our card display between a card element or before between a character and a spell card. So to, to do that, we need to have public game object. We're going to name this spell elements. Or no, sorry. I want the first one to be character elements. And we're going to do the exact same thing for... We're going to do the exact same thing for the spell elements. Next, we're going to have some labels that are going to say if it's a spell card or a character card. Next, we want to add a um, public PMP text. This is going to be our description text. Okay, and then I think that's all of them. All right, so now let's go down into our spell card elements. Add the things we need here. So first we're gonna need an array of our spell type labels. Then we're gonna need an array of our attribute target symbols. Then we're gonna need a way to space those attribute symbols. So we add a, a, a float that's gonna hold our spacing in integer. Then we have our attribute change amount text box. Okay, now that we have all that done, we need to go down into our update card display and figure out how we want to display both our character cards and our spell cards. So you can kind of see already which areas we have some issues with here. So let's go ahead and select these, and we're actually going to drag them down here to the bottom. Drag it down here to the bottom. Because we don't need to do those right now. We just need to focus on our all cards. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this to all card changes. I'm just going to format this a little bit better. And then we need to add one section right here to do our description text. So description text dot text equals card data dot description. So this is going to set our description text from all of our cards. So remember in here we have these four variables. And we are setting those four displays right here and then our update of image types uh, our update type images is going to be the same because that's going to be for that's going to be part of all cards okay so then after that we're going to do 
specific card changes. And we're just going to make two new methods. One for our character cards and one for our spell cards. So I'll give you just a second. Um, so what this is doing, it's checking the card data. So our card data, I'm going to scroll up real quick. Our card data is of the class card. And remember, both our character and our spell classes inherit from our card. So first, we are checking our card data. We're checking it if it is the type of character. If it is a type of character, then we're going to output this local variable. Then we're going to input this local variable into our update character card. Next, we're also, if it's not a character, we're going to check and see if it's a spell. If it is a spell, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to output it into this method. Okay, let's go ahead and set up those methods. So first we have our private void update display character card. And we're taking an input of a character card. So the first thing we want to do is we want to deactivate any any spell elements we want to make sure they're deactivated. And we want to do the opposite for our character elements. And then we want to enable our character label. And then we have those specific variables that are tied to our character class. So we're changing the, the color of the damage image to the same color of our damage type. And then we're setting the health text to a string and our damage text to the both min and max text. So now we can go up to this section right here. We can delete this because we no longer need that. Next, it's time to set up our spell card display. So we need to do basically the same thing that we did here. And copy that into here. But let's change this into character elements. Change this into spell elements. And change this into spell card label. So next we need to set up our spell labels. So first we're going to make sure that all of them are disabled for our labels. And then we're going to make sure that the correct one is activated. That's all that this is doing here. Next, we want to reset and update attribute target symbols. So to do this, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the spell type label. We're going to make sure they're all deactivated. And then we're going to do something similar to what we did right here for the type images. We're going to do something similar for that. We'll go down here. And we're going to go for int i equals zero. i is less than the spell attribute count attribute target count, and I++. 
So the current symbol is going to equal to I. Um, and then we're going to set the current active symbol to true. And then we're going to set its position based upon our attribute spacing. And then we'll or we'll get the new we'll get the Y position. We'll calculate that first, and then we'll set its position here. And then finally, we need to display our text for the attribute change amounts. We can do that here. So what this is doing is looking at our text box for our attribute change amount, and we are just kind of joining them all together from our array that we have in our spell card and displaying them in a list. Okay, that's it for the card display. Let me go ahead and save that. Next, we need to edit our card movement script. So before we do anything else in our card movement script, we need to set up a few variables. If you watched the troubleshooting video that I made about an issue that we had for this card movement script, you might already have the first part of this done. If you haven't seen that, that's fine. We'll go over it here as well. So we need to set up two layer masks. Layer masks are basically um, masks of ray casting where it's going to only hit things that are, have that um, layer tag assigned to them. So we need two masks. We need our grid layer mask and our character layer mask. Next, because we're going to be referencing these things repeatedly, we need to go ahead and assign these variables. So we've got private card, card data, and we don't have our namespace in here. So let's go up to the top real quick. And we're going to add using Venus Productions, which is my personal namespace. Be sure to add your personal namespace. Okay, and then we want to get our card display script, and then we want to get our hand manager script, our hand manager uh, object, and our discard manager object. So each of those objects that we made new variables for, we're gonna go ahead and set them. It's very similar to this uh, grid manager one, so you can copy that and just, uh, edit that as needed except for this last one is just get component because we're getting the component of the same object that we're attached to next we need to create our layer masks to do that we do grid layer mask is going to equal layer mask dot get mask we're going to just name this one grid. And we'll do the exact same thing for our character layer mask. And we we'll name this characters. And then finally, we'll do our card data setting. Now, we are setting up these layer masks, but we don't actually have these layers yet in our game. So I'm going to save my script real quick, and then I'm going to hop back into our game. So inside of our game, I'm going to go to Edit, Project Settings. So Tags and Layers. Under Layers, I'm going to add, for user layer 6, Grid. For user layer 7, Characters. 
And then I'm going to go into my prefabs for my grid cell. I'm going to change this layer to grid. Change for all objects. Yes. Um, so, and then next we're going to have to make a little bit of a change to our character sprites, our character prefabs. I'll show you what we have to do. So I'm going to double click my angel prefab to open it up. I'm going to go to scene right here. So the first change is easy. All I have to do is I have to go to layer and set characters. Change for all children. Yes, change children. And then I'm going to add a component. I add a box collider 2D. You can see it's clearly not aligned correctly. So I can click this right here. And then I can adjust my box collider to be more closely aligned with my character prefab. Okay, and that has to be done for every single prefab. So every single one of these, you gotta go in, change it to characters, add box collider. You have to double click it to open it. And then you can edit the box collider, adjust its size as needed. And you'll need to do that for every single one of these prefabs. Once you've done that for all those prefabs, we're going to have to go down to our handle play state and we're going to need to make some changes in our handle play state so right now this is only set up to work for our character cards it doesn't work for our spell cards so we need to make some changes here for us to be able to do that so i'm going to make two new methods I'm going to make a private void try to play character card. I'm going to take an input of array and an input of a character. Uh, a, char a character card class. Um, it's giving us errors right now, so you can just put in return. And I should fix that. Oh, I actually put, I accidentally put a semicolon there. Um, and then we're going to do basically the exact same thing. And copy this and we can do set of character we can do try to play spell card instead of character right here we'll do spell instead of character right here we'll do spell card and i miss spelled character up here let me change that real quick okay we're good there So the nifty thing is that we already have most of what we need for our character card. So we actually go ahead and select all of this and we're going to drag it down into our try to play character card. Delete that, right click, format document. Okay, so we need to make some changes to this. So this ray is just casting for everything. We need to change and make sure we're only looking for our um, grid layer mask. Because this only needs to find grids, right? 
So we're going to set its distance, which is going to be math f dot infinity. And then the layer is going to be grid layer mask. So the rest of this can pretty much stay the same. But we do need to make a few changes just to clarify and uh, just match what we already have. So inside of our section right here, we can actually delete all of this because we already have our data found. We can just change this to character card dot prefab. Okay, and we already are defining our hand manager and discard manager in our start. We can delete this stuff. Because we no longer need to do that. And I'm just going to add a little bit more description to our debug log here. We do character card dot name. Actually, no, let me change that to prefab. So I want to know what prefab it's placing. Now what name it's placing. Okay. And then we need to do a similar thing in our try to play spell card. So we can actually copy this. Paste it in here. And then in this first section, we'll change this grid layer mask to spell. Or no, sorry. Was it character layer mask? That's right. Um, we don't need to check if it's a grid cell because it's never going to be a grid cell because we're not even looking at that layer mask. And then we can actually delete all this because we don't need that. We can delete this because we don't need that. Right click, format document. And then we rename this played spell it's gonna be spell card dot name um when we got an extra space up here so delete that um and we can actually shorten this because we already have a card data stored now we should shorten this to just card data same thing up here in the spell card section Okay, that's all we have to do. So now we have these two methods to play our spell cards, but we're not actually using them yet. So let's go up into our handle play state. And inside of our input get mouse button section. So we're casting this ray and after we cast that ray, we're actually going to do the same thing we did before in the card display. So we actually jump over to our card display. We actually copy this entire section. Right click, format document, and we can change this to try sorry try to play character card and we're going to input our ray and then we'll change this to try to play spell card and input our ray as well and there we go now we can play both our spell and our uh, character cards. So back inside of our game, we can go into our cards folder, 
when you look at our cards that we have in here, you can see now they're all messed up, right? Because we changed those scripts. However, if you right click now, you go to create card, and we see we have these two options. We can create a spell card, which just have our card name or card type, and then the attribute target, which has our drop down here for the target for our attributes and our attribute change amount. So this is what it would look like. So we'll just name this health bell card sprite. Um, use one of these description adds and to character health. This is a buff. Its card type is going to be light. And there we go. We have a spell now. And we'll do the similar things. Oh, forgot to rename this right here. We can go, go ahead and go in here and do similar things. Card character and do basically the same things in all of here and set up a new character card. So now that you've seen what it looks like to make a new spell and make a new character, we have to go through and we have to edit each one of these and remake them into the character and spell cards, as well as modify our card prefab that we have to now accept all the new inputs that we have from our character and our spell classes. This is a lot of busy work and it's not something that I want you all to have to do because I want you all to be focusing on learning new things and applying new things. And this is just a repeat of stuff that we've already done. Um, just a few changes here and there. Okay. So um, what I've done is in the description of this video, you'll find a link to our Discord. In the Discord, you'll find a channel called Game Dev Tutorial Resources. In that channel, you'll find a post uh, titled Episode 11, and you'll find a attachment that is a Unity package that you can import into your project that's going to do all this for you. Now, there is a little bit of a setup for it, so if I drag this in here right now, don't do this, but if I drag this in here right now, You'll see that's going to replace some uh, cards I currently have, make a bunch of changes, bring in some new stuff, yada, yada, yada. Okay? We don't actually want to do this. We want to hit cancel. We don't want to do that uh, because there's a few things we need to change first. So, first and foremost, we need to go into our script folder. Actually, before you even do that, go ahead and make a backup of your game. The way you can do this is you can go into your projects folder, select your project, right click copy, and then just paste it in the same folder and you'll have a backup of your folder. You'll need to close out of your project whenever you do that. Um, it's an easy way to make a backup of your game. It's what I've been doing. So yeah, let's keep moving forward. So after you've made that backup, what you need to do is you need to go in here and you delete your card. As well as your character and your spell scripts. And then what you can do is you can download that Unity package. Oh, one other thing. We need to go into here and we need to just delete all those folders. Okay. Um, and then we also need to go into our, not our resources prefabs, but our normal prefabs and delete our card prefab. Okay. And now you can drag this into your game your project the downloaded unity package okay and so pop this up i don't see any conflicts anymore so i'm gonna go ahead and click import
After that is completed, we can go into our cards. You'll see we have a card prefab here, but we first want to go into our air folder and make sure that it has all the attributes here. This way you don't have to worry about doing it yourself. It's already done for you. But the most important thing that would have added an extra, like literally 50 minutes to this recording is that I've gone ahead and you've imported the card prefab. You actually drag this prefab out of this folder, put it into your normal prefabs folder. And after you drag your card prefab in there, you're gonna drag this card scripts folder into your scripts folder. And we're gonna go into our card display script. And just for now, we're gonna add in an update method to update the card display. This is just so we don't have to worry about anything else updating card display. We can just make sure that's run at least once while we're pre previewing things. So we'll hit play. You can see now we've got arrows showing up here. We can pause and let's go ahead and put one of our spells. So this is the dark spell. Hit play. You can see now I've got a dark spell showing up. All right. So let's go back into our primary scene and make sure everything's working. Let's go back into our combat scene. Save changes real quick there. Hit play. And there we go. We've now got all this set up. Oh, we've got a little bit of a wonky thing happening here. Let's figure out what's going on. So what's going on right now is that um, we have Eros as default for our card. And so our card data is not getting updated correctly. It's just staying to arrows. So what we need to do is we need to go inside of our card movement script. Scripts. And then card movement. And so you see right here, line 62 is where we're setting our card data. So I'm going to copy that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go if card data does not equal card data, then card data equals card data. Simple enough. This will make sure that our card movement is always up to date. Wait for that to run. We'll hit play. Yeah, now we're getting all everything on here correctly. And you can see whenever I have the fire spell, I can release on a character and it goes to discard pile. If you are not getting that, please make sure that your box colliders are set correctly on your prefabs that you are spawning. Um, and one last thing that I want to do before I tell you to go is we're going to organize our file structure here just a little bit. So we already have a card scripts folder. I'm just going to rename this um, cards. I'm going to create a folder. I'm name this utilities. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm name this managers. Um, and I think that's all that I need for now. Okay. So for all the card stuff, I'm going to put card display, card movement. Oh, did not mean to open that. Card moving into there. And then my deck manager, or all of my managers. So audio manager, deck manager, discard manager, draw pile manager, game manager, grid manager, hand manager, options manager. Those are all going to go inside of my managers folder. And 
I'm gonna make uh, one new folder. I'm gonna name it grid. Um, and so grid cell, grid cell display. Those are both going inside grid. And then the rest of these, arc renderer, drag UI object, font setter, position object, UI position object, and utility. These can all go inside of our utility folder. So just a little bit of organization going on. So this has been a very long episode, but we're not quite done yet. Now you have your homework. So if we go to our prefabs and we select our card prefab, you'll see a little error up here. Prefab has missing scripts. Now this is because even though we imported our prefab, it didn't pick up on our font setter script correctly. So what you need to do, um, and your homework is actually going to be twofold. The first thing is that you want to go inside your card prefab and on every single text piece, so description text, name, um, you've got some you know labels in here. Uh, let's see, health number, damage number. Uh, let's see what else. Got your uh, name, oh, card type labels. Those each have a text as well. So on each one of these, you'll actually see, oh, let me hop into my scene real quick. You'll actually see down here under the script section, missing monoscript. So you click this. We can select our font setter script. It's going to warn you that you can't save. You won't be able to save until you're done with all of this. So on our font class, so this is a card body. So we'll do our font class is going to be card body. And remember, you can check these names, these class names inside of our options manager script. We have these different classes in here okay so our card body is going to be this and then our text for our card type labels we'll do font setter again and then for the labels we'll do probably card body bold because it does have spaces doesn't it No, we did we did no spaces. Good, good. That's good, uh good management. We don't want to we want to make sure everything's the same. So card body bold. Same thing for this other one. Go in here. Font setter. Card body bold. Okay, and you don't want to do this for all of them. You know, so obviously our title is gonna be font setter card title and then our attribute change text is probably just going to be card body so yeah you just go through the rest of these and make sure that you have them all set up correctly that you have that font setter script on there there's quite a few of them, so keep going until you're able to click right click, right click this, or sorry, click on these little dots up here and click save. If it, you don't have them all, it's going to say saving failed. Okay, so do that, and while you're doing that, I want you to go to your card prefab, and you can see all these new elements that we have set up in here from our new card display changes. I want you to go through here and try to understand what each one of these are doing. I want you to understand what this is, has been changed to and how this is set up now. Because if you want to make changes to it yourself, you need to understand how it's set up. Okay, so that's your homework is fix those font setters and as well as understanding how this card prefab is set up. Next episode, we're going to go through actually configuring the spell cards to 
actually have effects on the characters. But before we can do that, we actually have to give our character prefabs a new script that's going to hold those attributes that can actually be modified. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I greatly appreciate that. And I'll uh, see you guys around next time.